One way we know how muscles evolved through evolutionary stages is where they developed from at the embryonic stage. There are three types of cell groups that muscles can differentiate from. We've got somites, somatomeres, and mesenchymal cells, and they each develop into different things. One of the issues with this, however, is that different muscles do different things in different um, animals, but we can still track them through their nervous innervation. But starting with the unjawed fishes, we have somatic and somatomere um, input. The somatic is the axial portion of the muscle. It's all of the metameric muscles and they're sub segmented throughout the body. And this allows them to undulate back and forth which is their best way of moving through the water. Um, and then the other type of muscle input we have is somatomeres, which is the pharyngeal arches, um, basically just the gill arches. Um, and these move up and down to allow the water to flow through and they can get all the nutrients that they need because it's highly vascularized in that area. Naphosomes or jawed fishes <laughs> have some axial contributions, the same as the unjawed fishes. It's all of these muscles in the middle. They're the metameric muscles, and they're segmented that allows the fish to move back and forth in this undulatory motion that is the best way of moving through water. Um, however, we begin to see branchiomeric jaw muscles, and those, just like jaw adductors that pull on the jaw, and jaw abductors that pull down the jaw, um, those muscles are branchiomeric or somatomeres. Um, and then what you also start to see in these jawed fishes, or nathosomes, is um, paired fins. Um, you have dorsal extensors, so from the dorsal side, it extends it out, so, and then you've got ventral flexors, so just the other direction. Um, and then these muscles developed from mesenchymal cells, which drifted away from somites. Now, onto the amniotes, we've got the axial muscles still. Yep, this is a tetrapod. Hello, tetrapod. We've still got the axial muscles that run through the body. However, they are no longer segmented. Um, and they became smaller and divided into different types of muscle. Like we've got the spinor erectae that goes through the spine and keeps it all straight. Um, and then we've got the intercostals. We've got a bunch of different muscles that do different things from these axial somatic contributions. Um, the hypaxial muscles um, developed into the body wall, so just the muscles of the body, and the diaphragm, which is a big muscle that goes through the middle here. So we've got the lungs here, and it flexes back and forth to allow the lungs to fill up and decompress, um, allowing us to get a further breath. However, we've also got the intercostals that run along the ribs here that also pull the ribs out and back in so that we can take deeper breaths. Um, yep, the hypaxial muscles became four groups, dorsomedial, which is just dorso, um, medial, and ventral, which is the stomach, and then lateral muscles. Um, the apaxial muscles, which used to be the back muscles in the fishes, um, lost the myomeres, which was the segmented part, and became the transverse spiralis, the long isthmus, and the intercostals, so your abs. This bear has some hard abs. Uh, the somatomeres became, or are, the branchiomeric muscles. 
So it's going to be all of your jaw muscles, your cranial muscles, and in the amniotes became the uh, trapezius muscle, which goes in this direction. It's all of this area that goes in this muscle and it pulls on the scapula in this direction, allowing for movement of the pectoral muscle of the pectoral girdle. Um, and these formed from what used to be the pharyngeal arches in the unjawed and the jawed fishes. Um, what is really interesting is the appendicular muscles in the bear, in the tetrapods, because we start to see more development, more splitting into different muscles. Um, we start to see extrinsic, which is muscles that attach to the axial skeleton and then allow for movement of the muscles, and then intrinsic, which attach to the appendages and allow for movement of the appendages. Um, however, the pectoral girdle is no longer attached by bone, and so if all of the extrinsic muscles were cut, um, this could just be removed. Um, and then the pelvic girdle has a singular axial contribution that runs along here and allows for movement this way. Um, otherwise, since it's attached by bone, um, the rest of the muscle is um, intrinsic within the muscle. And these are all mesenchymal contributions, um, so they drifted off from the so somites. Um, but the rest of the muscle is dorsal and ventral musculature.